Okay, so I just started recording. So if one of you guys can go to free chat, tell me if my voice sounds fine or tell me if it's like breaking up. I'm gonna like, does my voice sound fine to you guys right now or is it breaking up? Still all good? Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I, I actually do get that a lot. When I actually first started uh, on my other account, or I used to play Fortnite, um, I actually never did a face reveal. I just had a voice a voice reveal in one of my videos. And literally all the comments were, oh, your voice sounds, like, why is your voice sound so cute? I don't know why people think that, but it's whatever. So, um, yeah, so basically what I'm going to start doing um, for you people on YouTube as well uh, is I go over my weekly trades last week. I say why they're right or why they're wrong. Or wrong if I had any losses. Um, so, yeah, let me pull up my plays from last week. And... I'll make sure to make it educational so you guys understand like the setup. So uh, let me pull up my, actually no, I'm not gonna do that. So if you guys know the model one, model two, and model three I posted, they're all ICT's models. What I'd base my trades off is those models. So again, that's like the um, simple uptrend. And then break and market structure. We break this last high low, retrace in the fair value gap right here, and then down again so that's literally what I base all my plays off of there's a couple of variations of this but um, this is basically what I base all my trades off of so that is something you guys should keep into account um, so yeah let me go over to my channel in discord and check out some of the plays I took so the first I think the first day of the week this week was First, second, I think the 25th. So if you guys want to look at what, like follow along, you can go to my Dodgy ICT channel if you have, are paying for this disorder, or if not, it doesn't really matter, you're fine. So, okay, so the first thing I will go over, um, I did post this in my channel, okay? And I'm gonna explain why. So, I'm gonna show you guys so you can see this. So hopefully you guys can see this. So something that I did post was this. I go, this is my bias right now. When did I post that? I posted that the 27th, okay? So that was last week in the beginning of the week. And I, could, I said, this is my bias right now. So I'm just gonna show you how it played out. So why did I think this? So basically, you you guys can see what happened here. So this is the four hour chart. If we go to the trading V four hour chart, um, You can see when I thought that was going to happen, okay, we were actually, we were like right here, okay? So I thought we'd go up to this fair value gap and then I thought we'd go hit sell side. And at the time, okay, at the time sell side was right here. So no matter when we hit this fair value gap, I thought we were going to hit sell side. So the fact that we didn't hit sell, that we didn't hit this fair value gap right here and then hit sell side means even if we make a new low, I still think we're gonna hit this fair value gap and hit the new, whatever new low we made, okay? So that's something you gotta keep into account. Um, by the way, this is a volume imbalance, if you guys didn't know it. So basically volume imbalance is, see how this body does not overlap with this body, it's just the wicks that overlap, that's a volume imbalance. That is actually something that I need to explore more about, but that's actually kind of, kind of cool seeing that. Um, I'm pretty sure volume balance just means this, this is probably going to be filled, I'm assuming. But So anyways, we can see that at the time of when I posted that rough bias, we were right here. So I thought we'd go up here and hit there. I thought we'd go up here because see this giant wick? So this is, so for you guys who struggle to find liquidity, this is just a giant wick that is very, very pointy. You can see how pointy this is compared to like this. This is pointy, but it doesn't really go over these highs that much. But see how pointy this is? pointy this is to see how it goes with these highs so this is basically buy side liquidity which i was targeting so i thought we'd go above this buy side liquidity hit this fair value gap and reject and turns out we go above buy side liquidity but then we had a short model on smart time frame we go lower and what you guys notice is we actually rejected this fair value gap instead but why did i think we we're ultimately going to go up here it has to do with the fib so in order for me to take a setup i always draw the fib from the swing high to the swing low so at the time, all I saw was this. And as you can see, at this time, 
this fair value gap was not, it was in discount, okay? And when you want to short, you want to short in the fair value gap over premium, or over the 50% fib. Or not, it's, okay, 50% is not a fib, but that's where we want to short, obviously. So this is when you want to short. And let me just check the chat just to make sure I'm not lagging. Um, remember, if I'm lagging at any point, please just tell me in chat. But it seems like there's been no complaints. So the the fact that this fair value gap up here was in premium means that's why I thought we were gonna go here when we were right there. But then when we broke this, you can kind of see the the premium actually moves down the lower we go. So before we retrace up here, the premium just keeps moving down. So this was the final low. This was the final low that was created right here. Before let me just show this here in one two. So this was the final low that was created before the move up. So that's where I actually had my 50% level. And you can see that now, since this moved down, this fair value gap was in premium, okay? Just a little bit of it, though. But you can see that this was even more in premium than it was before. So this just made it more likely that shorts were going to short down here. And see how clean of a fair value gap it is? What I like looking for is this three candle setup. So I like to look for like a a decent sized red candle which is a non fair value gap see how there's no fair value gap that appears in here because these wicks overlap so basically there's no fair value gap there and then we get a fair value gap and then in this situation we did get another fair value gap but then no fair value gap and I like the three candle setup where we get huge selling pressure huge selling pressure with a fair value gap and then another huge selling pressure but no fair value gap so Ideally, if there's a wick that went up to here and we, this fair value gap was actually not created, I still would like this one the best because it was a premium. So, as you can see, my rough bias was correct. We went up here, we rejected, and then boom. Every single time we take a fair value gap play, according to the model that I have posted on my Twitter and I posted it here before, um, you target sell side liquidity. And sell side liquidity would be the last recent low created. So, this would be sell side liquidity. And as you can see, this is actually equal lows, okay? So some retail traders would be like, oh, this is a double bottom. No, this is not. I mean, yes, it is a double bottom, but this is relatively equal lows. So we have a low, low, that match up. And usually what market makers do is they target this liquidity. Why? Because that's where retail traders have their stop loss, and they don't want retail traders to win, okay? So that's where, that's where they're going to target. And that's where we, we, if we short here, we cover here. You don't want to cover after because sometimes you just wick under it and then we go back up. But obviously you can see, oh, if you covered here, we still move down. So why would I just wait? Well, after we hit uh, sell side liquidity, there's really, you're just kind of guessing where to sell. I mean, you could leave runners and just scale according to your own, whatever, take profits, trailing stop, whatever. But this is the ideal spot you want to take profit. So as you can see, that ended up working out. And I did alert, and I did alert a lot of short plays. Um, because my bias was we go up here and go down here. So before actually going to this favorite I got, I was long here, okay? So I like the long plays going up to it. So I had a bullish bias just for that reason because I thought we were gonna go up there. As soon as we hit this, boom, I my thesis immediately turned bearish, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna take a million dollar position and swing it for the next four days. I don't have that kind of money. Obviously only big institutions do that. But that means throughout the next of the days, like the future days, I'm going to be looking for short setups, and that's exactly what I did. So you can kind of see how looking for a bias in the four hour, even though you're not playing them, you kind of want to like have a good bias in the four hour to see what your bias can be intraday when you're day trading, okay? So let me just make sure no one is trying to find the link. Okay, I think we're good. So hopefully my voice is still good. It seems to be so good so far. So yeah, that was the first thing I posted a couple, like I think last week. So obviously that ended up working out. Um, something else I want you to notice is, see how when we retrace, we create this giant bullish fair value gap right here. I, so I actually saw that myself and I've had a lot of screen time, but sometimes I still second guess myself. When we create this fair value gap, yes, you could consider this a market structure shift as the model says, okay? so. Technically, this is the high breaking the last higher, or last higher high. So I guess you could consider that a market structure shift. Um, but here's what you gotta realize. In the model, which I'll actually post the model for you guys right now in free chat, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I think it'll help you visualize it a little better. 
Um, so if you guys go to free chat real quick, I'm gonna post it. Okay, so go to free chat real quick and look at the model I just posted. So basically in that model, okay, whenever we have a market structure shift or a break of structure, which you guys see, um, technically this is a break of structure. So, or technically this is a market structure shift. So we have this last obvious higher low right here, and then this would be your market structure shift down. And what do we create when we hit this market structure shift down? We create a four hour fair, fair rally gap. So going based off that model, where is target? Where's the target? The target is sell side liquidity. And sell side is just always the recent swing low created before going the fair rally gap. So in this instance, it was right here. So you have to tell yourself when this play is live and you're in action and we're going up this fair rally gap, you have to tell yourself no matter what, even if a bullish fair rally gap is formed here, the whole the setup on the four hour, the setup on the bigger time frame still has to play out. So yes, you can go to smaller time frames and look for buying opportunities when we get here and scalp like longs, which I actually did a few times. I actually went long at like three six eight zero, and I think I have a ten point move, and I went long at like three six nine three. I think if those are numbers just off the top of my head, and I had like a nice trade there. But you have to tell yourself when the full setup has not itself had the cordy, no matter what's created, even if it's a even if it's a bullish for a value gap, you gotta trust your conviction and trust that the actual first setup you have is gonna play out. So in order for that to play out, the target is here. So that's where you're bearish until. But like I said, if there is a bearish, if there is a bearish or bullish fair rally gap, you can go in the smaller time frame, scalps and longs. And again, as you see here, what happens? This is a fair rally gap and we blew right through it. Why do we blew, blow right through this? Well, first of all, it's not really my three candle setup I look for. I like to see three consecutive front candles and I only like to see the middle candle of the fair rally gap. But the second reason why this blew through it is because we still had to fill this fair rally gap in the four hour, okay? So this was, this had a lot of smart money orders still waiting to short here. So they didn't really care about this. There was no smart money trying to short here. That's all the smart money was up here. Dumb money tries shorting here. And why is smart money up here? It's because if you draw the fib again, it's a premium. So there's not a lot of people going to short right here because it's under the 50%. And you obviously want to short stuff when price is high, not low. You want to long stuff when price is low, under the 50%. So uh, that's something to take away. So that was basically kind of my bias last week. Um, so yeah. By the way, if you guys have any questions, just put it in the free chat. I'll try to answer it throughout the class. So let me go to a couple other of my setups that I posted. So 926, 925. Okay, so I think it was 925. Yes, it was. So I posted 925. Draw a zone here for educational purposes. When was this? This was. Um, I don't even know what that was. I think this is an overnight play. So you can see we, we bounce off that. That was an overnight play. Um, that was a trade I had. I never alerted. It was too fast to alert. That's, And I said, have a feeling we could rip to the four-hour fair rally gap, but I'm still not bearish to equal lows. So I was not bearish, but I was expecting a pullback to this four-hour fair rally gap. Okay, so here was 926, okay? And I had these. So I'm going to teach you guys something that... I guess is not like it is ICT or like ICT would probably not want me teaching this, but you can really like take advantage of these fair valley gaps. Um, and in this picture, this was the 26th. Okay. So let me go to the 26th real quick. I'm just going to show you guys something you can do to make yourself money. Even if you're, even if you don't trade ICT, but you can still make money doing what I'm about to show you. So this was not, this was the 26th. So it goes right here. And I was on the, I was on the 30 minute at the time, but I think I drew those zones from the smaller time frame. So 
And I drew them before market open, I believe. Oh no, 26th, that was noon. So the 26th, noon. Okay, so I drew them right here, I think. Why is this all weird? One second, I'm just trying to find out where I drew these. Oh, I know why I drew them. I think I had, I think I had that one with a smaller time frame. So basically, if you do not know ICT, okay, you're gonna have to pay attention for this. If you don't know like ICT, you don't want to go through all his videos. Here's something you can still do to make money, okay? So here's the 26th at 2:45 p.m. That was at 9 o'clock. All right. Ready? So the zones I had was, I had one right there on the five minute. So look, I had one right here. I want you guys to notice what happened. So I had one right here. This is my first zone. I think I had another zone right here. Okay, and then my third zone was right, oh, I was way down there. My third zone was right here, I believe. Okay, so what do you guys notice about all these zones? First of all, these two zones are ripped through, okay? This zone was not. This had a perfect rejection off this zone. Why did I mark this zone? Because first of all, remember this candle setup? See how this fair value gap was is the only fair value gap out of this whole down move. See how none of these fair value gaps are created? So this kind of comes into knowing fair value gaps. So you don't really need to know ICT for this. I mean, ICT would, himself would not like me saying that, but you can literally just scalp these fair value gaps if it's like the right scenario. Um, but in this situation, that we have a bunch of green candles, a bunch of red candles, and in that kind of setup, um, in that kind of setup, you want to remember this giant green candle then giant red, red candles with fair value gap in the displacement of these green candles i play this setup a ton so as you can see there's only one fair value gap so there's not going to be much room you're not there's not going to be a fair value gap here there's not going to be a fair value gap here so if so you know that smart money has the orders only up here you don't have to guess for smart money shorting and what i do is if i see something obvious like this i'll drop for market open because i know that's the only spot where smart money is going to want to short um, and what you can do is no matter what the bias is, okay, no matter what the bias is, you can scalp these fair value gaps and it's literally like, it feels like a glitch in a video game. Every single time you get to these, even if you don't reject and go a million points and you don't get a thousand percent gainers like you think, you can, we can still reject these and you'll get like nice, like 10 to 50 percent scalps. Um, you'll get like nice 10 to 20 point scalps if it's futures, like, which is a lot of money. So if you see like really obvious fair value gaps like this i would draw them out like even this one see how this is very obvious there's no fair value gaps on the way down other than this one right here so as you can see what happened look we rejected that a ton and look it's the like same setup as right here we have the giant green candle then giant red candle i love draw i love playing these fair value gaps i don't know if there's a name for whatever this is but they work a lot um and this actually was a mitigation block um which is for another time that you don't really need to know what that is. But you can see, you can scalp these fair value gaps a lot. And I'm gonna show you what happened to these zones. So look, as soon as we got to this zone, this was at 8.50 a.m. If you took, if you shorted right here, let's say in the middle of it, 3,700, with a three or four point stop, or maybe your stop loss was above this order block, which is the green cannon for down move. That's a four point stop. So if you had a four point stop, you shorted this, you could have literally made a 10 point move just from scalping this twice, which is a lot of money, okay? So this one 10 points, this one 12 points. And you can see how well respected that is. And if we draw the fib from up here to up there, I want you to notice another thing. This is another clean fairy value gap. It is in premium, it is above the 50%. If you shorted it, 
look, 3692 to 3682, that's another 10 point move. Even though it's not hitting liquidity, you can still scalp these because we, we will reject out of these very clean ones. So even if you don't know ICT, I would recommend having these fair value gaps on your screen because I mean, some of them are pretty much free money. Um, but as you can see, if you shorted this one, you would have been like, oh, there's a bullish fair value gap below. So maybe that's where you want to target. And what I would do is I would short right here and I would target, I would target right here. Why? Because if you switch your bias and you want to go long, then longs are obviously going to get in under the 0.5 level, under the 0.5 retracement and in the bullish red value gap. So I'd honestly, just to be safe, I'd probably um, cover right here, like at the 0.5 fib just in case, and you got to be quick about it. But if you're shorting, but you see there's a long bias, just make sure you're getting out, out in the spots where longs would go long, okay? so. Obviously, you could have made a 10 point move there. None of these other fair value gaps are that clean. Um, I guess this is, but this is in premium. Okay, so obviously, we rejected that, but that was only a five point move. This isn't a premium. You want to look for the ones that premium. So, the premium ones, we want 10 points here, another 10 points here. And again, if you're, you got to look at both sides. If you're trying to log, okay, if you're trying to log, look, this is a break of structure. And this is a bullish red belly gap. So why would you want to short? Why would you want to short this all the way down to there? This is a, an easy long setup. So if you did short right here, what you can get away with, you would you definitely sell where you'd long. And um, you'd want to long under this 0.5. Right? So you'd want to cover right here or right here. Um, obviously the first spot probably because I don't like, uh, you don't, you're not supposed to really take free value gaps twice. I guess you can, but sometimes it's just low probability. So that's where you want to cover it. And then, boom, look again. Same giant green candle, giant red candle setup. Fair value gap right here. Um, you can see we never actually filled this fair value gap the first time we went to it. But look, the first, when we wicked into this, we had wicked into it 3710. Boom, right down the 3705. That's a five point move. Next time, 3713 and three seven three six nine eight so that's literally more than a 10 point move that's like a 15 point move you could have gotten just from this and again we have the break of structure to the upside so technically this is a long setup we created a bullish fair value gap when we went up here and we have a fair bullish fair value gap right here if we draw our fib from this to right here this is where you'd cover if you shorted this, okay? Because this is where you'd log if there's a break of structure. So just drawing those zones, like when I said draw those zones, um, like those are just very obvious zones where I knew you could just scalp because based off experience and just seeing how well they work, even without knowing like fully what ICT is, if if you know how to spot like a clean fair value gap, like um, obviously this worked, then you can really scalp these setups, even if their bias is wrong okay and that's like the beauty of getting in these setups and moving your stops to break even because a lot of times when you do get in these setups there's not going to be much drawdown like you're not going to be down 50 percent if you're in options right away you're usually when i'm taking these setups i'm always green off the bat so um drawing these fair value gaps is very really important even if you don't know like how fully what ict is you haven't watched any of these videos um and for you guys who really don't know how to why ICT works, there's probably gonna be times where you draw the wrong fair value gaps that aren't really valid fair value gaps. And you're not gonna know why, but I guess you're just gonna have to figure it out with experience or you're gonna have to watch ICT's videos. Um, but yeah, all the fair value gaps I take, I make sure there's market structure shifts, I make sure there is like the actual models I showed you guys in free chat. So like those are the most high probability ones and those are the ones that work for me the most. So that's kind of what I do. But again, you can scalp these giant fair value gaps or these obvious ones on the way up most of the time. So that's why I had all those zones there. So another thing I said, you see what happened. And I go, engineer, this was one of my group chats I was in. Do you see how they created this double top? I go, why did I say it was engineered? And then I said, we will run those. So if you go back to the chart, 926, it was right here. Let me go to the one minute. Oh, it's gonna go back all the way over there. Darn it. I have to go back.
I would show this in the five minute, but it's gonna be much easier to show in the one minute. All right, ready? So, okay, right here. Look what happens. See how perfect these equal highs are? Th these are like perfect equal highs, almost to the set. Um, think that, yep, yeah, right there. So the high of this candle was. 3717.30. High of this candle was 3717.40. So when you see really, really obvious equal highs like this, especially being on, remember at this time, okay, at this time, that was when I said, oh, I think we're going to rip up into the four hour fair value gap and then I think we're going to reject it. So I was bullish at this time. I was even bullish when we were retracing all down here. I was surprised we went down here before going back up again. So I was bullish down here, I was bullish right here. And as soon as I saw these equal highs, I was like, oh, this is perfect. The engineers just literally set those up. They go along with my perfect bias, or my bullish bias, so that's actually perfect for what I thought was gonna happen. And I said, we will run those, and obviously you can see what we did, but we actually ran those with taking liquidity first. So I took liquidity here, and what I like to do is I like to draw X's. So you can see that before running these highs, look, we took liquidity, lots of retail traders who just know market structure probably saw, oh, we just broke market structure, I'm gonna short. Boom, they get wrecked. All their stop, they get stopped out. But look, this is actually inducement, okay? So we actually broke this. New IC2 traders would be like, oh, that's a that's a market structure shift. Look for a fair leg out there short in here. They would get wrecked. And you gotta be really experienced to know that this is a liquidity grab in real time because you have to know there's still liquidity resting above. So why would we just go down without testing these highs, right? So this was a liquidity grab and this is actually the inducement model. And hopefully you guys, let me send a quick video or quick thing of the inducement model. So if you go back to free chat, how do you determine premium FMG or not? I think you mean fair FEG, fair value gap. I'll show you in a second. So look at this setup. I just sent free chat again. That's inducement. Look at the bullish model. So do you see how the bullish model number th number three bullet point says? Many people mistake this for a market structure shift. You got to realize if we don't if we have liquidity above like equal highs and we still have not hit them, you have to realize that they're, this is inducement. Inducement means they're probably stopping people out to even go higher because in order to move higher, you have to stop people out. In order to go lower, you have to stop people out. So we stop people out. We have a nice fair value gap you can enter in for longs, and it was a discount. And if you guys don't know how to draw to see if the fair value gap is a discount or not, basically what I do is this is going to be really sloppy. You want to keep track of your swing highs and swing lows. And wherever the fair value gap was created, so let's say the fair value gap, it, this is, there's a bullish fair value gap right here. Wherever it's created, you draw it from that recent swing low to swing high. So swing low to swing high right here. And you wanted to make sure it's under the 50% level when you're getting in. So that's how you determine if it's a discount or premium. Under the 50% is discount, over the 50% is premium. So if you're shorting, you want to ideally see a fair value gap right here. You want to short. Obviously, the trend would be different, but um, that's how you determine that. So hopefully you guys recognize this is, in, is inducement, actually, from the model I just sent on free chat. Um, and I don't even think I logged in here at the time. Um, I think I would, I don't even know what I think. I think I missed it. but Or maybe I was in the five minute. I didn't realize this was a fair value gap. But that was a play would have gone pretty heavy in. Um, so yeah, let, let me go over a few more of my plays that I had. Ran them pretty quickly. So this is the poem I say, this, we rejected this zone that I had. And we rejected this very quickly. So you could have, this is already a 30, this is already a, almost a 10 point move right, but at this point. So that's why I had those Jones there today, that day. Boom, easy scalp, I, I think I took that for like 10 points. Ended up going 20 points, I think I was out by then, but yeah, sometimes when you have these zones, sometimes we're gonna get a bigger rejection than I thought, than I think. Sometimes we're gonna get a smaller rejection than I think. And obviously this zone, as I drew, 
we actually got a way bigger rejection than I thought. But that's the beauty of, oh, I'm going to scalp for 5 to 10 points and leave runners, see how far they go, okay? So sometimes if you have a bullish bias, like say you're bullish in this example, and you want to scalp this, you might scalp this, take 10 points, maybe see where it goes. And if your bias is wrong and, it, and we're going down to hit sell side liquidity, well, then you're going to catch a big move off there. And, it's a, and it, the beauty about being wrong is you, you can still get in because there's still a fair value gap to get in, even if your bias is wrong. So you're still going to catch a big move like that. Um, and then what else did I say? Um, so in this situation, I remember uh, if you looked at NQ or US 100, which is also QQQ, sometimes what these things, what they do is one will hit premium and one, one will not. So this was actually the FIB, or this is the FIB with a 50% on US 100 at a time. And as you can see, there's really no fair value gap here in the four hour. Uh, there's just this tiny one right here, which was kind of respected. But sometimes what happens is they will hit premium and, like the US 100 will hit premium and sometimes US 500 will not. But usually I, I only play US 500, so I mean it's unlucky for me if one hit, if US 100 hits and US 500 did not because that means I probably didn't get my entry in US 500 that I wanted, but you just gotta accept that. And then I, and here I said just a lot of pits, puts in the fair value gap. This is where you gotta be quick with entry. So I had this preset already. I think I just mark up all puts right here. Immediately, I was at 40%, um, and then they ended up going 200%, which I never posted. Um, but you can see in this example, this was the 26th. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, remember, remember the setup I showed you guys? Giant green candle, giant red candle. Very valid gap created within this giant green candle. Look how clean this is. You just scalp that, and then boom, sell right here. This is probably set up a post on my Twitter. I don't even know if ICT's talked about this, but when I see this exact can of formation, it's with a fair value gap. I'm just gonna say it's very, very good. Um, you can almost never lose on those. Uh, but the one I said I'm lottoing puts in was, I was on the five minute at the time. So let me go to the five minute. The 26. So I said I was lottoing puts right, right here. Why did I say that? Well, we broke structure. Okay. Broke structure right here. So MSS. Very rarely got. Technically a breaker block as well, because we had this red candle which was up move, and then we broke broke through it, and then we retraced back to it. So that's two points of confluence. And then the other one was if we draw the fib from right here to right down here, because that's where the fair value gap was created. Boom, you can see how good my entry was. I literally said I'm shorting right there, and as you can see it barely even went up after that. Like that was a top tick entry. So you guys can see how valuable these these really are, and but you got to make sure there's a uh, this is actually a breakup structure, not a market structure shift. A market or break up, a market structure shift to technically a change in trend. But yes, it kind of was a market structure shift because I guess technically we did break this last higher low, um, but it's all up for interpretation. So you can see this was a premium where you want to short. It was in a fair value gap, and we had a break of structure. Sell side is down here, the last recent swing low. And it, if you were bearish, you could also say sell side was right here, which as you can see, we hit sell side, boom, what happened, we reversed. And then, um, yeah. So that was the, another play that I had a nice return on. I'll go over one more probably. Um, I don't want to keep you guys here too long. So I'm going to short this zone when we get there. All right, so this is another fair value gap I had. So I'm going to see what happened when we got to the zone. So knowing that I wanted to short this zone right here, which was on the five minute at about 12 o'clock. It looks like it was at the end of the day. So. It looked like this zone was uh, 
3710 to 370. So it looks like the zone was right here. And let me see what happened. I'm not, I don't think I did, I don't even think I did take a loss on this. So I said looking for something like this. So here's another lesson you can learn. Knowing that I wanted this fair value gap entry up here, and knowing that fair value gaps can act as magnets sometime, look what I said. I said looking for something like this. So this was the zone above, which I had right here. And then I also saw a bullish setup on the way up to the zone. And it's kind of using liquidity as a as like a target. So if you think a liquidity spot's gonna hit, then that's when you look for the setups in order to get that liquidity. That's when you look for your entries. And I thought the zone would hit because I wanted entry in it. And you can see on the way up to the zone, which was on the five minute, this was at 2100. You can see on the way up to the zone, right here, we never hit the zone, but look what we had. We had a market, we had a break of structure. So here's your break of structure. I wanted the zone to hit, so it went along with my thesis. We had this break of structure. We had the fair value gap created right here with a nice clean order block down here. And look what happened. When you draw it from, I'm not drawing it to this high, I'm drawing it right here because the fair value gap was created before it was created um, before creating this obvious eye. We already created this obvious eye, so I'm gonna draw it from right there. Um, and boom, here's a fair value gap. I knew we w I, I really wanted an entry in the zone, so look what happened. This is another long entry to get out of the zone because knowing that this acts as a magnet, this is gonna be more entry for, this is gonna be another entry for smart money. Um, so you don't always have to use liquidity for targets. So if I thought there was buy side liquidity up here where I really thought we were gonna hit, then yeah, you try to look for setups like these to get entries on the way up. But also there can be fair value gaps above that you think we're gonna fill. And that's, again, you could use that as a magnet. So you'd be like, okay, I'm looking for more bullish setups to get up there. So this was obviously an entry you take. And this is where you enter, and you sell a buy side liquidity. So the most recent swing high, which would be right here. And you would have sold right there. And what you can do in this situation is you leave a stop and break even after selling if you hold runners because you still think we're going up here. Or you could just hold because you have so much conviction we get up here but obviously that would not be good if we totally tanked and you're wrong so in this situation say i took 75 percent of profits right here and left the stop loss of break even you would have gotten stopped out but we still ended up hitting the zone and that's going to happen sometimes but other times what's going to happen is you won't get stopped out and we will hit the zone so you'll get this move plus an extra move um and it all obviously does depending on risk management Really, the stop loss, if you went long here, the stop loss would be under the swing low. You never even got close to that, but from 3690 to 3685, that's a five point move. For some people, that would be too much, but again, that's just a risk management thing. Uh, there's no getting around that, in my opinion. So, as you can see, when we were out here, I thought this was going to play out. And the general, like, it generally did play out. Um, Obviously, the play would have failed if we went on this low. We never did. So, I mean, I was right. You just had to get a solid entry. Um, so, yeah, that was one thing. And then what happened when I... So, here's what happened. We got up to 3712. And I what I think I did was... If you see how this zone looks... On the five minute, a lot of times when I draw these five minute zones, I go down to the one minute because the one minute zones are smaller and you can be more precise. So I think what I did is I entered at 3708 maybe. And I'm gonna see how this looks on the one minute. So this is another tip you guys should learn. If you see a five minute fair value gap like this and you're like, oh, that's kind of really big. What you can do is you can go to the three minute or you can go to the one minute for see if there's a more precise entry. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. And by the way, this is the last thing I'm going over. Um, it'll be really quick. So if we go back to the 26, I'm just gonna check the three minutes see what that looks like real quick. Okay, so here's a three minute. So this was the five minute fair value gap what I have here.
But look, the three minute fairy gap value gap was even smaller. So that's gonna tighten your entry so much more and it's gonna help you guys it's gonna help you guys who have really tight stop losses. Um, sorry about that. And again, it did go over, but I think it did reject the one minute fairy value gap. Let me just double check. Because I was up pretty fast in that play and I probably would have been stopped out if it went that much over the fair value gap. Okay, so here's what the one minute looks like. Ah, yes. So the one minute fair value gap was right here. So it's a little bigger than the three minute. So this is why I like the one minute the best. Look what happened. So the one minute, as you can see, did not break above the fair value gap. And you can see if you entered above here, like 3710, 3711, it went all the way down to 3699 to this um, bullish fair value gap. So this was more of a trickier play because, um, again, if you, you could have entered right here, and if you had a four point stop, you would have stopped out. Um, but I think what happened is I don't know if I said I was setting a limit. It doesn't look like I set a limit anywhere. Maybe I just did that on my own. But I said stop loss at 3708. So I think I entered at 3708. So right here. And I had a little bit of drawdown at first, but I wasn't really too worried because it was a it was a nice one minute fair value gap. And I was up four points and that's when I had my stop loss at break even. I'm not sure. I think I ended up selling this at break even or maybe for a little profit. I'm not sure why I they didn't update that. Maybe the internet was bad or something. Um Oh yeah, so I said stop the break even. Yeah, so I remember that. And I think this is the night. I don't think this is during market offer hours. So I was play was I was stopped the break even. That's important. I, I was stopped when it came up here because my entry was right here, and it just wicked above my break even entry. And it, but you can see it wicked up into a fair value gap. So that was kind of a bad stop loss on my part. Why would I have a stop loss in a fair in a fair value gap? You're supposed to short. That just makes no sense. Um, so yeah. That's basically all I'm gonna go over for now. Um, I had a lot of other really good moves this week. I, I could literally spend about two hours going over all these. Um, I did have a really nice trend line play, um, which maybe I'll go over next week because I really wanna share that with you guys. Um, I guess I, if you guys wanna go, you can. I'm recording this. I'll probably just go over the trend line run real quick. You don't have to go if you don't want to, but if. That was enough for you, you can, but I'm just going to quickly show this trend line play that I had. Um, but yeah, if you do, um, if you do want to go, like I said, that's fine. So let's see. This was on Friday. So you guys can get in right now and this very really gap with a stop loss below trend line. So let's go to this real quick. This was very, very clean. So this was, oops, I think this was at 10.30, okay, so 10.30. So 10.30 was right here. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So as you guys know, here's a perfect trend line. I don't know why I'd say that. So right here. I had this trend line drawn. Why? Because sometimes I draw these trend lines as kind of liquidity, and what market makers do is they'll go above and then just go below them to kind of take liquidity. As you can see, we took stops on here. So a lot of people going short here, they'll have to stop about the trend line. Boom, they get stopped, be, have a big down move. So what did I see here? As soon as I broke this trend line, or as soon as you broke this trend line, you can see I said, wait for the... I waited for the five minute close. If you go to the five minute, let me just go to the five minute real quick. The five minute looked even cleaner. We close over this, which is confirmation for retail traders to go long. Retail traders go long, boom, we retrace, stop out retail traders. But here's what I'm looking for. I was looking for a retrace in the fair value gap. So I drew this five minute gap, and obviously you can see this wick actually went under it. But at the time, again, I like to go to the smaller time frame to get even more precise entries. The fair value gap in the three minute was right here. So we respected that nicely. And this play, as you notice, 
is not in discount. But why did I go long? Well, I went long because I still had three points of confluence. I had the fair value gap, I had the market structure shift, and why would this be a market structure shift and not a break of structure? It's because we were creating lower highs and lower lows, and then boom, we we broke this last lower high, or last lower high, go above it, and we created the fair value gap. So we had the market structure shift right here, and we had the trend line break, we had the five minute close over, and we had the fair value gap. So I still have three good reasons to take this, even though it's not a discount. Um, I like to have three, but if this trend line wasn't here, then yes, I would make sure it's in discount. And if it wasn't here, I probably wouldn't have entered this. And this is where I entered. I think I got a nice six to 10 points off. Um, I forgot what I got filled at, but once you do enter this, look, um, your targets are gonna wanna be the last obvious lower highs. So right here was a target. Right here was the target. And where we have the market structure shift as a target. So let me just delete this real quick. So if you entered right here, bottom ticked it, then maybe if we go above this, um, this wouldn't be nearly enough to take profit, but it depends on your risk management. So you could have taken profit here, which would be almost a six point move. You could take a profit here, which should be almost a 10 point move, or up here, it should be almost a 20 point move. So I like to take profit at these last recent swing highs. Why? Because these are all liquidity. Every single time we go above these highs, you're gonna see us reverse to stop our retail traders and breakout traders. Even you can, you can even see it here. Boom, we go over this last liquidity line. We just totally reverse, wreck breakout traders. Got right here, we go over this line wreck breakout traders and then we dump again so in this situation the final target was right here but we didn't reach the final target but that's why you're supposed to take partials on the way up okay so it's very important to take partials on the way up um and then I, for this one i actually set the stop loss as a five minute close under this which we never even got even close to um i was up six points i think I, yeah i scaled out of six points um and then i said stop plus a break even and then here's where I set my targets were. So I just, again, I set them to obvious swing high. Swing high. So this is a target, this is a target, and this is a target. And then 10 points there, 15, 20. Final target, top line. So the, that was obviously for runners, which I was, I think I was already out by then because it was 20 point move on futures is really good. Um, but yeah, that was a trend line play. Again, you can take these trend lines, just make sure you're not getting in on the breakout because a lot of times what's gonna happen is you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna buy calls here, I'm gonna go long here. And as you can see, we go up a little bit, but look, you can give me a better entry down here. There's like zero drawdown on here. If you went right here, there's gonna be a lot of drawdown. So, th again, I like to look for three reasonings to take these plays. As you can see, this was a very, very good one. But um, yeah, that's all I got for today. Um, Again, if you want to sign up for my alerts, uh, just DM me. I can send you a link. I also alert in my own Discord, um, but you'll have to join that and sign up. If, you, if any of you are interested, you can DM me. But, um, yeah, I'll make sure to go over my plays next week as well. Um, I think it, no matter, like, even if you don't pay for this Discord, if you don't want to pay for anything, um, I get it. I didn't pay for anything. I literally just taught myself on YouTube. Uh, but it does take a lot of time. If you want to do that, I really recommend coming to these free classes I do on Sundays. Hopefully I'll be able to do them both Sundays, but obviously sometimes I might not be able to. And usually what I'll do is I'll recap them, recap my plays I had throughout the week. So you can kind of see them in hindsight and see what I was thinking in live time, my thoughts in live time. So, um, yeah, other than that, does anyone have any questions? I'll feel free to text voice free chat. gap versus fair value gap so what a gap is is that's kind of something retail traders say if we go to spy a gap would be something like this see how there's just a giant unfilled gap right here that's not really a spy you're supposed to buy in that's just a spot you're expecting to get filled because there's no bids or ask here we just gap above it so these are usually just imbalances that get filled because 
there needs to be price in every single bid and ask usually because that's how the market works. You're not just going to bid way over one price for no reason. So that's kind of what a gap is. It's just that you can see how it's an actual gap. But a fair value gap is um, basically this candle setup right here, which I'll show you. So a fair value gap is basically just this. See how this wick and this wick don't overlap? It kind of creates this gap within this candle. So this means there's just a bunch of buy orders here. So this is going to be a fair value gap because there's a gap created from this low. This wick does not meet the high of this wick. Um, so like this. See how this wick does not interlap, this overlap that wick, so this would be a fair value gap. Uh, hopefully that helps. But usually if you're if you're on futures like US 500, which is by, you're not going to get really any gaps because it's 24 set, it's 24 five. So obviously it's not open on the weekends, but the only gaps you get is on Sundays when we either gap up or down. But usually those are filled. Uh, an order block is just a red candle before an up move and a green candle before a down move. So, um, see how we have this green candle right here before this down move, green candle, down move. The order block is basically this whole candle. So this would be a bearish order block and you can see when we get back to these order blocks, we reject off them. Um, so you can see that this is a very obvious one. Sometimes they're not so obvious, like kind of these ones, because there's green, red, green, and then down, which is not so obvious. But this is a pretty obvious one. Um, and this would be a bearish order block because it's a green candle for a down move. A bullish order block would be this right here. This, see this red candle before this up move? This would be a bullish order block. And what I do is I draw line at the opening of those that's where I enter so I enter right here um, it's just where the algorithms enter so I like to enter just to be a more precise entry because some, sometimes we will go under under it but most times than not we actually reject right at the open and if I do go long or short order block my stop is always below or above the order block so my stop would be right here probably if I did go long again with this my stop would be above it so up there and as you can see, the stop doesn't hit. Yeah, no problem. What I recommend doing is go back test. Look for these giant, like these small green candles before up move, or down moves, and then small red candles before up moves, and go back test and see how they look and work out. A failure to launch FVG. What do you mean launch? And, and as you guys can see, I literally just picked out these random order blocks. Like, I didn't even plan that, and you can see how, like, well they're respected. But, yeah. And you make make sure you look for clean ones. There's four red candles before this giant up move, so this wouldn't really be a clean one, in my opinion. I guess you can consider this last candle one, but, again, I like to look for the one candle setup. Uh, that's all preference, usually. So you said, how about a failure to launch FVG? Do you mean fill the FV, fill it? Or a failure to go up to it? And one of ICT charters. I think you mean like a failure to fill it. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Literally all I look for is just the model. So the model that's in free chat and that's literally how I base my plays and sometimes like, say I think that we will go up to, um, say I think we'll go up to, this is fair value gap, and say, oh, I'm looking for an entry right here. 
sometimes what you're going to see is we might get stuck at these lower fair value gaps. So we get stuck at that one. And if you draw the fib from this, oops, I just drew that one down here. I wanted to short here because it was a premium, but we actually rejected here, which was surprising to me. Um, so sometimes you might not always get your entry in here, but you just have to be okay with that. There's going to be more of these that appear. Um, so if that's what you're kind of talking about, not failing to fill this, that just means you're not going to get filled. And this will probably be filled sometime in the future, uh, but obviously not anytime soon, as it may seem like. Same with this one right here. Like if someone was trying to short right here, obviously they wouldn't have got their entry. But you can't be mad about that because there's a lot of these. Alright, so hopefully you guys um, learned something. I'll try to do another class next Sunday. I think I've done them every Sunday so far. Question is futures Monday through Thursday complete? Um, yes. So if you're watching US 500, so if you're watching SPY, if you're on the three minute, look, like all these candles are the same. You still get the same, same fair value gap. If you go to US 500 or US 500.F, which I use, doesn't really matter. It's literally the same exact thing. We had this fair value gap. Larry, the only thing that's different is just these prices. This is multiplied by 10. Um, so yeah, they all correlate. All right, well, I'm gonna end it there. Um, if you guys have any more questions, just at me in voice chat or just at me in my Discord. Um, just DM me for my Discord invite if you wanna join um, for that, but yeah. Uh, other than that, I'll see you guys later. Peace.